So hello everyone, welcome. Uh, as we all know that you know each country has been uh, uh, struggling with novel coronavirus. Economies, people, societies have been affected by this uh, disease, and we have been eagerly waiting for a vaccination. So today we have here Dr. Gaganeet Kang with us to have a quick discussion on the future of coronavirus vaccine and what is uh, India's role in that. Hi, ma'am. Welcome. Hello. Yeah. So quickly jumping on to, I think something that we we've all been waiting for an answer for is that you know countries are racing towards finding a vaccination for novel coronavirus. Um, where do you think India is uh, with that right now? In terms of discovering new vaccines or making new vaccines for diseases that haven't been seen before. Uh, there are several approaches that can be taken to make those vaccines. And in India, much of what we do with vaccines relies on conventional technologies. So many of the technologies that are being talked about now are not ones that have been widely used in India in the past. But Indian vaccine companies have linked up with collaborators in other parts of the world and they are bringing some of those technologies in. Overall, there are over 100 programs that are looking at developing vaccines, and there are currently seven vaccines that have already gone to human trials. None of those are in India, but we expect that of the many Indian companies that are working on vaccines, towards the end of this year, we should be having vaccines going into human clinical trials. Before you, when you make a vaccine, you have to start first with animal studies yeah. and then move into humans. So some of the Indian companies will be going into animal studies pretty quickly. Okay, so I, I think you mentioned about a lot of countries going into uh, trials very soon. I'll just come back to that. Before that, you know, there's this, uh, there's a big doubt that we've all been, uh, that's been plaguing our mind. It's that we've never been able to, we haven't really found a vaccination for MERS or SARS, which are both, you know, coronavirus diseases, like, you know, coronaviruses. What do you think is the, uh, you know, what do you think is the chance of us finding one for uh, the novel coronavirus at this quickly? Okay. So if you look at SARS coronavirus, there were efforts made to make a vaccine for that. Two of the vaccines went into human studies. One of them was a DNA vaccine in the US. And there was another vaccine that was also developed and went into human studies. But because SARS itself was so short-lived, it was barely there for a year. Once the cases went away, the interest in doing a vaccine went away because you need a certain number of cases to be able to evaluate whether the vaccine works or not. So if there's no disease, there's no way to advance a vaccination program. That was the issue with SARS. With MERS, we continue to have cases of MERS. And currently, an organization with which I'm associated, the Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, has MERS as one of its top priority pathogens. And there are multiple programs that are looking at advancing MERS vaccines quickly. There's been a lot of discussion in MERS, you know, should you be vaccinating the camels or should you be vaccinating people because this is a zoonotic disease. Yeah. And both approaches are things that are being considered at the moment. So I would not discount the possibility that we might have a MERS vaccine. But for both SARS and for MERS, we've never seen the kind of effort that we are seeing today a hundred programs and about 45 of them pretty reasonably advanced is something we've never seen for any infectious disease before in this kind of time frame. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's amazing. Ma'am, uh, there is a lot of speculation regarding a vaccination that China may have found. And you already mentioned a lot of trials. UK, I think, has already started trials. So has Germany, I believe. So what are your views on these? So the trials that are being done are for multiple kinds of platforms for making vaccines. The first vaccine that went into clinical trials was an RNA vaccine. 
and we have no licensed RNA vaccine product. We now have, at the same time, China also put some of its vaccines into human studies, and one of them has actually finished phase one and is going to phase two now. The other vaccines, I mentioned seven that have been in phase one, two of those started three days ago. There are multiple candidates, DNA, RNA, protein vaccines, and in China, a very interesting approach that they're taking of having antigen presenting cells being modified to deliver the antigens as a vaccine. So the Oxford study that you mentioned is also another interesting one because that takes one virus and, and uses it as a vector or a carrier for a protein that is from SARS coronavirus 2. That vaccine is going into human trials because it's a platform that has been used for many other kinds of candidate vaccines. They think that they will be able to finish phase one very quickly and get into phase two studies very soon. They're talking about June and potential licensure by the end of the year. I think that's a bit optimistic, but I think these vaccines will all be progressed very rapidly. It's important to remember that having a vaccine candidate does not mean that you have a vaccine. Out of these 100 plus programs, if we wind up with two or three vaccines that really work by next year, we'll be phenomenally lucky. Yeah. And, you know, it has been said that whether Indian companies uh, manage to discover the you know, vaccination first or not, it will be largely Indian companies that will be producing it. You know, how correct is that assessment? I hope that will be the case. But Indian companies are the vaccine manufacturers for routine immunization around the world. They are the ones that supply to markets that have public vaccination programs. Indian companies so far have not made some of the more technologically advanced vaccines that may be successful in this endeavor. Nonetheless, because our companies have an ability to innovate in the production process, if you think about who can deliver vaccines at scale, then Indian companies have to be in the mix. One of the things that we have to remember with this is the idea of eminent domain. So if my country is making a vaccine, will I let it out before I vaccinate my entire population? No country would want to do that. So what we need to look at is what does a distributed manufacturing platform look like so that every country that makes vaccine makes more than it needs for itself so that it can be shared with the rest of the world. India is very well positioned with the number of vaccine companies that it has that manufacture billions of doses to be able to participate in this process. Yeah. And um, uh, there is one last thing that I actually want to uh, know from your end, that uh, I want to understand what are advanced purchase agreements. You know, we have, in the case of H1N1, we have seen that there were multiple complaints that it was called a global pandemic way too soon. And, you know, advanced purchase agreements were a part of that complexity. Could you please uh, explain this peculiar problem? So advanced purchase commitments are when you promise a manufacturer that you will buy a certain number of doses of vaccine from them at a certain price ahead of time. So they know that they are going to have a market and therefore they start to make vaccines. If you're making a lot of vaccine, you need to know that you have a customer. If you don't have a customer, why would you bother to make the vaccine? So yeah. the APCs are really set up so that the manufacturer is assured that when a vaccine is ready, it will be bought. And it's one way of incentivizing manufacturers to invest in a program in which they would not otherwise invest. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your insights, ma'am. They were, they were amazing and very valuable. And we hope to take some of these insights forward. 
and uh, thank you everybody for watching this interview uh, if you have any opinions or suggestions please do comment thank you